This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Follow the marquee and come to the Monday matinee. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied by an adult. Hi there, and welcome to episode 594 of the Sonic Society, the world's greatest showcase of modern audio theater. I'm Jack Ward, and I'm out of order, and you're out of order, and the whole place is out of order. I'm David Alt, and um, uh, Jack, either you've been up late watching court television again, or we've got a new audio drama with a legal flavor to it. Right you are again, David. It's almost as if it's scripted, Jack. <laughs> almost. <laughs> At least on the shows tonight, you're right about the legal flavor. Tonight we feature the first three episodes of Overruled, an exciting, intense drama series from Stephen Brown and Ollie Johnson. You know, this is what I love about the audio dramatic medium. It's the constant variety of shows that can be told. And there certainly needs to be some more courtroom dramas. Absolutely. So buckle up as we proudly present The Hudson Case, The Sunken Forest, and The Great Plains. And it all begins right here. On the Sonic Society. Order. <laughs> Hey, Max, did you need me to do anything else before I go? No, that's quite all right, Karen. Go ahead and enjoy your evening. Okay, well, don't stay too late. Your cases won't go cold by the morning. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I know. I should have been back by now. Yeah, about two hours ago. Look, a, a client helped me up earlier, but I'm almost done, all right? I should be back soon. It's fine. I mean, I don't even know why I expected you to be home on time. Because I have such an infallible track record? Yeah, right. Look, honey, how's about this? If you want when I get back, let's go out for a drink or something. Have a nice evening. Yeah, I think we might make last call at this rate. I'm serious. I could just come and pick you up and we could go straight out. No, I've already got dinner on and I can't be bothered. Just, please, try not to bring work home with you. I don't want to spend the night watching you zone out. I never do that. Yes, you do, Max. Sometimes it's like you're never here, even when you are. All right, okay. Look, I'm sorry, Sarah. I'll be home soon. Sure. See you soon. I love you. Trouble in paradise. Broadstone. How the hell did you get in here? Oh, I'm sorry. Hope I haven't arrived outside of your visiting hours. I thought we were finished. I gave you what you wanted. You know, you should probably spend more time with your wife. I imagine she gets so lonely waiting up for you. An absent husband often breeds discontent, as well as other things. You go anywhere near, Sarah. I swear I'm gonna just... Well, I... You... You're what? <laughs> You'll get all sweaty and call me something horrid. Please, Max. I have no interest in your wife. You're the one I want. Can't you find someone else? I could, but I prefer to keep things private. Have a closed circle. Ah, well I'm honoured to be one of your trusted vendors. Really? But I'm not going to help you. Hmm. That's a problem, Max. You see, here I find myself in another sticky situation, and your name is the first that comes to mind. You've already put my career in jeopardy once. And I don't want to go to prison. Well, it wouldn't be you going. Oh, sorry to interrupt, Max. I forgot my keys. I didn't realise you had a visitor coming in, though. I would have stayed. Don't worry about it, Karen. He was just leaving anyway. I'll see you around, Max. Wow, and I thought I had bags under my eyes this morning. Huh? Did you get any sleep last night? Not really. Well, this should brighten your day, then. What's this? 
is what Felix needs to tie up his case, an MOT showing the car that Mr Hudson crashed wasn't safe to be on the road. But I guess our dodgy dealer didn't really care about that. I mean, how did you get this? I visited all the MOT certifiers in the area to find out if any of them had seen the car before. Turns out one of them had. Turns out the car didn't even come close to passing the test. Yeah, but this is different from the MOT on public record. Well, I'm guessing someone covered this one up. The dealer probably had a friend make one. Yeah, I don't know, Ashley. This seems too easy. So? So, we've spent two weeks following some guy around just to find out if he was a smoker. And now, within days, we've found out that a car dealer has falsified public records and committed manslaughter. Look, I know that I'm just your assistant, but in my opinion, it shouldn't matter how easy a case is. We were asked to investigate this car crash. We did. And now we know that it wasn't an accident. We have to bring this forward. Oh, yeah, of course we do. But don't you find it odd that we specialise in extramarital affairs, conduct background checks, find lost property, and now we're tied up in this? Well, you weren't nearly as apprehensive when you got involved with that homicide last week. Yeah, that was different. What was that about, by the way? Nothing. It just turns out someone was falsely accused of a murder. I know that, but who is the client? The whole thing was over so quickly, I don't even remember seeing someone come in about it. Ah, oh, yeah, well, I had a phone call from the killer's wife. She wanted me to verify his alibi, and I did. It was, well, you know, it was pretty cut and dry. Oh, right. So, you sure we can trust this piece of evidence? I got it myself, didn't I? Yeah. Right, well, I'll take it over to the lawyer's office then. Max, hi. Hey, come in. Look, I'm just looking for something. Um, ah, here it is. Ah, what can I do you for? I've just come in about the Hudson case. Ah, Mrs. Hudson, yeah. Um, I mean, please tell me you've got some good news. She's been blowing up my phone the entire day on our progress about the case. Well, I don't think you're going to be disappointed, Felix. Whoa, whoa, remind me not to play cards with you any time. Damn, you've got a really good poker face. This is the break we needed, you know. Case closed. So what's the plan, then? I mean, I guess you want me to present this in court, right? Ah, we'll see. Look, I want you to be present just in case, but I'm happy to bring this up myself. I mean, where did you get it from? This this is the original MOT, I'm guessing. It looks like it. My assistant surveyed all the certifiers in the area, and it turns out one of them has conducted an MOT on this car before. Okay. Just a few days prior to the one on public record. All right, so you, you think the one on record is a fake? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I, this does seem a bit odd, but not entirely unheard of. I mean, coupled with the post-crash examination, this should be all the judge needs for a conviction. Do we know who's going to be presiding over the case? Yeah, I mean, actually, I've worked with him a few times before. Great. Well, uh, you'll let me know the court date when you have it, yeah? Will do. Thanks again, Max. Felix, look, I was just wondering... What... Why did you ask for my help in this case? Ah, I mean, you know, I actually got a recommendation. An old client of yours spoke fondly of your work. Can I ask who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, give me one second. Oh, uh, this could be the judge, okay? So, just let me get back to you on that, all right? Okay? We'll we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah, all right, no problem. I'll speak to you soon. (laughs) Sarah, I'm home. Oh, thank God. For a second I thought someone was breaking in. Oh, come on. I'm not always home late. Well, then you're super early today. Uh, Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's good. What about you? How was your day? Well, I only had to deal with one child's vomit, so it's an improvement on yesterday. Well, don't you have caretakers for that? I can't believe the school will have you sprinkling sawdust rather than teaching. His union's on strike at the moment, so yeah... For the time being, at least. But enough of that. Let's have some wine and celebrate your lack of tardiness. (laughs) I take it you don't reward the kids this way, too. (laughs) I shudder to imagine my class with fewer social inhibitions. Now, do you want white or red? Red. Do I dare ask how your day was? Yeah, it wasn't that bad, actually. We had a break in the car crash case. Oh, 
that's good then. Turns out it was manslaughter. Oh, uh, not so good then. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, this whole situation is making me feel a little uneasy. We've been working on this for what? I don't know, almost a week? And now we're about to undermine the police's ruling that this was an accident. You worry too much, Max. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know, something just feels off to me. Oh, stop worrying. You're just doing your job. Well, actually, it was Ashley that solved this one. Either way, there's a reason people come to you. It's not like the police have time to chase up leads like this. True. I've just got a feeling about this one. Well, how about I put your mind somewhere else? Now, if you'll turn to Exhibit B, here you'll see the original MOT certification obtained from Stafford Service Centre. Objection, Your Honour. It has not been confirmed that this is the original MOT. In fact, we believe that this certificate was fabricated in the prosecution's favour. On what grounds? Well, we have timesheets, as well as testimonies that attest to the fact that the car in question undertook one MOT test, of which it passed. Yes, I have reviewed your evidence, and to be honest, I don't find it particularly compelling. How so? Your testimony comes from the defendant's wife, and the timesheets were compiled on the defendant's <sighs> personal computer. <laughs> what? What are you suggesting? Well, unless you have some evidence that's exempt from your client's influence, the prosecution's claim that this MOT is the original will stand. But, Your Honour, my client has never set foot at this testing centre. There isn't any CCTV footage of the car even entering the facility. A lack of evidence does not in of itself constitute a piece of evidence. Now please, let the prosecution continue. Your objection has been overruled. Felix, wait up. Hey, Max. What's up? You kind of rushed out of there. I wanted to ask you a question. <sighs> What's up? I was just uh, wondering if you had that name. You know, the uh, the old client that recommended me. That thing? Oh, wow, I figured you'd forgotten about all that. Especially with all this going on. Yeah, well, I... Look, I couldn't find the name in the end, all right? So sorry about that. But thanks again with the case. I couldn't have done this without you, so... Look, I've got to report back to my boss before I get in trouble, so see ya. Felix. That was Out of Fashion with Specific Heights. Coming up, we are talking about the roads. How safe are you when driving? So did you want to go back to the office or chase that guy down? No, that's all right. I've had enough for one day. Could you drop me home? Don't fancy walking. You only live around the corner. That's all right. I actually wanted to run something by you. Fire away. What kind of business doesn't have CCTV these days? I don't know. Why are you doubting this? I thought you'd be pleased. Our work just put a criminal away. Yeah, I know. I was just wondering. <laughs> Maybe you should have been helping the defendant instead? Don't worry about it. It's over now. Yeah, I know. But I mean, that lawyer, right? That lawyer should have known that their defence wouldn't have held up in court. I mean, all they really said was that the car dealer had never gone to that centre. And all their proof could have easily been tainted. So? Well, so? I'm just saying. Wouldn't the lawyer have advised the dealer to change his stance? They had no shot of winning that hearing. He's probably a public defender assigned to that case with no real motivation to help someone who is clearly guilty. Yeah, perhaps. I'm just wondering if the dealer really believed himself. Or worse, if he was telling the truth and just couldn't back it up. You're overthinking things, Max. Just look at what they brought to the table in their defence. It wasn't much at all. Yeah... Yeah, 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 you're right. So case closed then? I guess. It's just really hard to trust something that comes too easy. This job, you know, really gets to you after a while. Oh, the things I have to look forward to. <laughs> well, you keep solving cases like this and you will go far. Just imagine how far I'll get if I actually get some rest each day, unlike <laughs> you. Yeah, well, you'd be surprised. Or maybe not. I have fallen asleep at my desk more times than I can count. I thought I noticed a drool stain on the Hudson file. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is you. Listen. Thanks, Ash. I'll see you tomorrow, all right? All right, see ya. Drive safe. Hello? Yeah, it all went to plan. No, he doesn't know anything. Is this it? We're done now, right? 
One second, some idiot is trying to pass me. Overall, episode 2, available Sunday the 13th of January 2019. Follow us on Twitter for updates and more at overruled underscore drama. Hey, Ash. What's this? You miss me already? Max, I'm... What's going on, Ashley? I can't hear you. It's... I'm... Huh. Weird. Who was it? Ashley. Sounded like she was in trouble or something. Trouble? What was she saying? I've... uh... I've no idea. Well, I mean, if she doesn't call back, I'm sure it's not that important. Yeah, I guess it could wait till tomorrow. Oh, actually, uh, that reminds me. I forgot to tell you, some guy was looking for you yesterday. Huh? Who? Um, I think he called himself Broadsword, or something like that. He told me to tell you that he stopped by. Oh, right. Did he have a message, or...? No, um, I kind of thought it was a bit odd, to be honest. Why didn't he just come by your office to begin with? I don't know. I must have been at a client's or something. Maybe he thought I was home. So is he a client? Or someone working on a police force? Yeah, something like that. Well, whoever he is, I took it as a good sign that he stopped by. Well, what do you mean? You're finally letting your guard down. When you work for the police, you used to be so guarded when it came to personal details. You didn't even want your partner to come over for dinner. Yeah, well, that was different. You sure he didn't say anything else? Nope. Look, I'm just saying, it's good that you're starting to relax and let people in. You don't have to be so solemn all the time. Isn't that why you became a PI in the first place? Yeah, you're right. Anyways, feel free to invite your colleagues over for dinner, or drinks, you know, or whatever. It would be nice to see who you're spending so much time with. (laughs) Okay. And Broadsword isn't his real name, is it? I've no idea. Good morning, Brighton. You're listening to LM Radio on 98.6. It's looking like we're in for a rainy day here, with things only getting bleaker this afternoon. You were pretty restless last night. Yeah, just a little. Did you have bad dreams? Yeah, you could say that. It wasn't what I said about having your colleagues over, was it? No. Well, maybe just a little. Okay. I was serious about that, by the way. I know. Right. I gotta go. Have a nice day. You too. I'll try and get back early, okay? (laughs) We'll see. Hey, Karen. Any messages? Felix left a message, just asking you to call him back, but otherwise, nothing else. All right. Is Ashley in yet? I haven't seen her. Give her a call and see where she is. Sure thing. Oh, by the way, I uh, cleaned most of your office this morning, but I left the case files on your desk. What do you mean? What files? (laughs) The ones you left out after your little shredding party, the Hudson one and the Murphy case. Were you in a rush or something? It almost looked as if the place had been raided. Oh, yeah. I had a call. Uh, Look, I've got to go take care of something. Oh, no. Oh, fuck! Ashley isn't picking up. Okay, uh, just keep trying her. Max, there's someone here to see you. Uh, Not right now, Karen. Just give me a minute. It's the, uh, it's the police. Oh, one uh, second. Max? Yes. Oh, (laughs) hi. Long time no see, Wilson. How are you doing? I'm good. Not doing traffic anymore, so that's an improvement. And you? How's working in the private sector? Ah, a little more tame, I guess. I get to choose my own hours, so, you know, I'm not complaining. Anyway, what brings you here? Just a few questions about your colleague, Ashley. Why well, haven't caught you at a bad time. No, uh, no, no, I was uh, just reorganising, you know. But, uh, she okay? She should have been here by now. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to have to tell you this. She was in a car accident last night, and she didn't make it. Oh, God. 
I know this is a lot to take in right now, but any information you could give me could go a long way into our investigation. Investigation? You're trying to tell me this wasn't an accident? There were tyre marks from two different vehicles at the scene, but only one in the wreck, so we're exploring the different possibilities. Okay. Can you tell me if Ashley had any enemies? Enemies? <laughs> no, none that I knew of. Yeah, no one ever seems to have enemies, but it does help to ask. So, did she have any recent dealings with suspicious characters? I don't think so. I mean, well, sometimes we investigate criminals, but Ashley was my assistant. She was never too hands-on in that regard. Okay. So when was the last time you saw her? Around 4pm uh, yesterday. Uh, she gave me a lift home. And did she say anything out of the ordinary? No. And that was the last time you spoke to her? Um, uh, yeah, uh, to the best of my uh, recollection. Okay, then. Well, that'll be all for now. But I'll be in touch if anything comes up. And here's my card if you recall something else. Okay. Uh, thanks. <sighs> Karen, can you get me Felix on the line? Yep, I'll just put you through now. One is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Felix. Hello, Max. How are you this fine morning? <sighs> what do you want? Nothing at all. I just wanted to check in on my old pal. Tell me, how's Ashley doing? She's, uh... It was you, wasn't it? What was me? You did this to her. You killed her. Last I heard, it was ruled an accident. And how would you know that? Now, now. I wouldn't go around speculating, making these wild accusations if I were you. Someone might get offended. I heard you stop by my house. I did warn you about going anywhere near Sarah. No, actually, I don't think you quite got round to the whole threat part. But anyway, as I told you before, I'm not interested in her. It's you I want. I'm flattered, naturally. But I can't say I'm interested in whatever you're offering. Sure you are. Listen, it's real simple. All I need you to do is find that killer you got out of prison. And then tell me where he is. And if I refuse? Max, I took you for a man of intellect. Not some kind of thoughtless renegade. If you refuse, then you'll no longer be of use to me. In fact, you'll become a burden on my mind. A burden that I'll most definitely alleviate. Is that a threat? No, you foolish man. It's a promise. And if that doesn't motivate you, then perhaps I'll visit your wife again. Ask her what will. Okay, fine. I'll help you find this guy. Great. That wasn't too hard, was it? Can I just ask you why you won't do it yourself? I trust you, Max. We're in this together. We're a team. And whilst you take care of this, I'll take care of something else. Understood? Yeah, understood. Now, Felix, where were we? Hey, random thought. Let's go on holiday. I think it would do us both some good to, uh, you know, get out of town for a while. We could maybe even, uh, I don't know, visit your parents. It's just an idea. You think about it, all right? I'll see you later. Bye. I was just wondering if James was here. Oh, get out of here! No, I didn't mean to upset you. I just wanted to speak to him. You can't, all right? Please. He might be in trouble. That's nothing new, love. Now leave before I make you. I just need to see him for a second. Really quick. Look, he never came home, all right? I thought he has been released. Heck, maybe he was and he just didn't want to come back to me. But I haven't seen him, so just leave. I'm sorry. Really. 
I, I just thought he'd be here. Yeah, me too. Is there somewhere he might have gone? If he has any sense, he's left the country. Because the second I see him, I'll... I'll... <sighs> Does he have any friends he might be staying with? Nah. He was never that friendly with people. Okay. Thanks for your help anyway. Guess you could check the sunken forest just down the road. He used to like hunting there, but I'd never step foot in that place. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll look. Sorry to disturb you. If you do find James, tell him to come home. I, I will. Hey honey, uh, I guess you're stuck in a meeting or something. Look, ignore my last message, just, uh, I just wanted you to know what was going on. That guy that came to the house, he wasn't a friend. And if you see him again, you run, alright? He's dangerous. He's got me working for him, doing stuff that I shouldn't be doing. I'm tracking someone in the sunken forest. I don't even know if I'll find the guy out here, just, uh, there's an abandoned looking hut coming up, very <laughs> Blair Witch-esque, I guess he'd... You'd hate it. Anyway, I love you, all right? And I'll send you my location just in case. See you soon. Hello? James? Are you in there? Listen, I'm not here to take you back or anything. I need your help, all right? I think someone's after you, after both of us. All right, I'm coming in. Get back! I'm warning you! Whoa, 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 James. I'm not here to get you. Put the knife down. We need to talk. Talk about what? There's some guy after you. Sure looks like you're after me. It's not me, okay? It's this guy. He's the reason I got you out of prison. And? His name's Broadstone. I don't know what he wants with you, but, uh... I'm guessing it's not good. Broadstone? Yeah. That's the guy who paid me in the first place to, uh... Well, you know. Oh, guys, stop it. My ears are burning. You! Yes, me. Now calm down, or I'll end up making a mess of you. The finale of Overall Series 1, Episode 3, available the 20th of January, 2019. You're making a huge mistake. I am? Please, enlighten me, Max. Where did I go wrong? I've told the police what you did. How you killed Ashley. How you made me submit false evidence. Uh-huh. What else? I'm intrigued. Well, I... Uh, I've told them where I'd be. I've told them where we are. They'll be here any minute. Oh, no. I guess I should run. I should get in a car and flee. Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> nice try, Max. But I know you didn't say a word to the police. You didn't think I'd leave your office without bugging it. So that was you. You destroyed my files. Who else? That dim-witted secretary of yours. Please. I couldn't have had those files floating around after all of this. You're very well organised. But you're not exactly one to think ahead, are you? You're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, you could have told the police what you knew. About me and the rest of it. But you didn't, did you? Now, it certainly looks suspicious. How you were the last person to speak to Ashley before she died. I sure hope there was no evidence of your presence at the scene. You planted evidence. Just an insurance policy. In case you didn't play along with my recent request. And I'd recommend that you keep being useful... So now, let's play the game of your life. You only have two choices. Let me guess. Death or prison. Ah, oh, you ruined my fun. But yeah, and I wouldn't have dressed it so nicely. An unmarked grave or incarceration. You get the idea? So what now? What do you want with us? Max, I was hoping you'd stay on as a retainer. I need your... Help with a couple of things down the line. 
I should stress, however, that this is a cutthroat business, if you know what I mean. And what about me? You've already ruined my life. What else could you possibly need me for? I'm glad you spoke up, James. I thought you were being a little quiet over there in the corner. As things stand, your services are no longer needed. You're a loose end. One that I'm going to have to tie up. Ah, oh, uh, let me just take this. Don't move a muscle. You know what? I've seen enough films to know that you're going to try and escape right now. So let's just... Ah! Ah, my knee! There you go. <laughs> Back in a tick. Look, can you walk? We have got to get out of here while we can. What's the point? I'm done for. No, come on. We'll get you to a hospital. You'll be okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, but what then? This nutter comes after me to finish the job. Don't you worry about it. We'll go to the police, all right? Uh, we'll get yeah. him put away. Oh, even if he does get caught, even if this all comes out, I'm not stupid. I know what I did. I'll go straight from the hospital back to prison. Look, you don't know that. Your sentence will probably get shortened. You can tell them that he forced you to kill, that you didn't have a choice. It's better than dying here. You'll get to see your wife again. You can still live your life. Okay, fine. Help me up. Look, we can get through this window, all right? I'll lift you up. This way. Listen, it wasn't just the one guy that Broadstone had me kill. It made me do something else. What do you mean? I, I went to a dealership a few weeks ago and, and then tampered with one of the cars. Was there anything else? Oh, no. Except... It isn't just him. There's someone else. A, a woman. Ah! <coughs> oh, Maxie. James. Maxie. J James. I'm coming to get ya. you to get in your car and drive. It doesn't matter where, just don't go home. Oh, Max, I'd ask how you are, but I can clearly see you're at a loss for words. There's something I have to tell you. Get away, so I'm on my way to court. No, look, there's someone after me, all right? This guy, Broadstone, he approached me a few weeks ago. He threatened to kill my wife if I didn't help him. He made me submit false evidence. He was the reason we set that killer free, all right? Look, he... Well, wait a second, Max, just slow down. He made you submit false evidence? Yeah. I brought you evidence of James Murphy's alibi, but it was fake, all right? He gave it to me. So you're telling me I let a killer roam free and that some murderer is out there right now? Uh, no, not exactly. Look, Broadstone made me track him down. I found out he was in this sunken forest. I, I, I guess he followed me there. He, like, he killed James. Have you told anyone else? Called the police? No. I barely got away, all right? Look, you have got to help me. I'm not safe, and God knows who else this guy has got to. Don't worry. I'll call the Chief Constable. Can you stay here? I need to find my wife. Okay, well, once you find her, make your way to the police station. I'll have someone there waiting for you. <sighs> Thank you. It's okay, Max. We'll get this guy. It'll all be over soon. Hey, it's me. 
Max knows too much. Make sure he doesn't speak. Sarah! Sarah, are you here? I'm, I'm in the kitchen. Fancy seeing you here. I'm so sorry. I didn't listen to your messages that I got here. And they were quite a listen, if I do say so myself. Never pictured you as a spontaneous romantic. Taking a trip just to get away from it all. Get away from her. Can't do that, I'm afraid. You see, someone's got to hold a gun to your wife's back. And I doubt you have the stomach for it. Did he hurt you? Are you okay? I, I'm fine. Of course I didn't hurt her. Yet. We were actually having quite a nice time. We were trying to guess all the places you might have been instead of here, saving your wife. So tell me, whatever it is that you did, was it worth it? I guess we'll find out. Yes, I guess so. Let me ask you a question, Maxie. Death or purgatory? <laughs> Are you here to give us a lesson on philosophy? Not quite. Just curious. What would you rather? The Great Void or the Great Plains? Listen, Broadstone. You've only got a few minutes before the police get here. So why don't you drop the gun and give yourself a head start? Many people would choose the Great Plains. The idyllic countryside that stretches from one horizon to the next over the nothingness of the Great Void. What are you talking about now? I think it's the unknown that scares people. The never-ending dark. But for me, I think the greatest horror lies in the plains. For in death you feel nothing. You see nothing. You have peace. But in purgatory, you're painfully aware of your lack. Your shortcomings. You know, what it's like to exist to live, but you can't do anything about it, you're simply an observer, stuck, wishing that you could feel again, that you could make an impact. Just let us go, you don't have to do this, I'll do whatever you want, just leave Sarah out of it, okay? I would if I could, Maxie, but I'm a man of my word. Look, we won't say anything to the police, alright? We won't press charges, just, just leave. Answer me. Death or purgatory? I don't know. I don't know what you want to hear. Answer the question. Purgatory, all right? I'd rather be in purgatory and play in the fields or whatever you said. Good. But I wasn't asking for you, Maxie. I was asking for Sarah. Wait, what? <laughs> Hi, you must be the husband, Max. I'm Dr. Lee. Oh, uh, yeah, hi. I must say, your wife is tough. She fought really hard in surgery, and it looks like she's going to make it. Oh, thank God. When will she wake up? Mm, it's hard to say. It could be a few days, it could be a few months. Okay. Well, I mean, what can I do? There's not much. Just be there for her. She can still hear you. Your presence, your support, will go a long way with her recovery. For the time being, she'll need to stay here so we can monitor her condition. But once she's stable, you'll be able to look after her at home. OK. Thanks. If you need anything, just ask the nurses to page me. Max? I know this is a bad time, but could you step outside for a second? Sure. Did you catch him? No. Okay, well, did you speak to Judge Leroy? Yes, we did. And it's been brought to our attention that you submitted false evidence in a homicide case. What? Look, he, he told me that you were going to help. All that we know is that you falsified evidence, obstructed justice, and aided and abetted a criminal. Oh, come on. Look, I was forced, all right? Broadstone, he did it, I told you. He shot my wife. He killed James Murphy. We went to the sunken forest where you told us we'd find James's body. 
but he wasn't there. I'm telling you, all right? I was holding his hand when he got shot. I saw the blood. If you could accompany me to the police station, we'd like to question you a little further. I need to stay here with my wife. Your wife will be fine. An officer will stay here to watch over her. No, I'm not leaving. I've answered enough of your questions. Sir, this isn't up for debate. You must come to the station with me. Why? Am I under arrest? We can't ignore Judge Leroy's accusations. I don't have to put you in cuffs, but I will if necessary. <laughs> this... this doesn't... this doesn't make any sense. He... Like the guy said that he'd... Everything all right, officer? It, it was him! That's Broadstone, all right? He did this! He shot my wife! I heard what happened to your wife, Max. I'm deeply sorry. But I think you'd better get some rest. You've just experienced a severe trauma. Oh. How could you do this to me? I was the first officer at the scene. Without me, your wife may not be breathing right now. Mr. Wisely, you need to come with us. No. Uh Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I'm I'm not going anywhere. Someone, please help me. He tried to kill my wife. He's going to kill me. Help! Help! All right, Wilson. Get him out of here. Time to go, Max. Hello, Sarah. Wow, you really don't look good. I would have chosen death for you. I hate to imagine what it's like in there, being so aware, yet so powerless, as life passes you by. Don't worry, darling. This will all be over soon enough. Overruled was written by Ollie Johnson and created by Stephen Brown. Starring Guy Barnes as Max Weisler, Liam Rowley as Broadstone, Emma McGreevy as Sarah, Kim Howell played Ashley, Lauren Troop as Karen, Chris Whiteford as Judge Leroy, Dominic Brown as the defendant's lawyer, David Francis as Felix, Leo Ulf played Officer Wilson, Julia Eve as Dr. Lee, Gareth Seven as James Murphy, and Madeline McQueen as Mrs. Murphy. Free to download on iTunes and SoundCloud. Search Overruled Drama. For updates and more, follow us on Twitter at Overruled underscore drama. I still think radio is probably the greatest entertainment medium ever invented. It made the audience work. Instead of a big, ugly glass picture tube, you saw the performers in your own mind. We were a family. It was a nucleus of people that you never grew away from. When I arrived, all the WTIC people had started Mm -hmm. and were working in New York and introduced me to different people and got me at least into some of the auditions. I think there is something so special between the listener and the other side of the microphone in the studio. Breaking Walls is the podcast on the history of American radio broadcasting, focusing on moments, shows, and people from the golden age of radio. Subscribe to Breaking Walls everywhere you get your podcasts and at thewallbreakers.com. And that's this week's show. Please let folks know that their Sonic Society has moved by adding a rating to the Apple Podcast Store. Every review brings us up in their analytics in Apple to let others know both how to find the Sonic Society and how they can get involved in the Mutual Audio Network. You can also contact us through our email at sonicsociety at gmail.com and let us know how we're doing, or connect through the Facebook groups including Electric Vicuna, Sonic Society, or the Audio Drama Radio Drama Lovers Group. Add us on Twitter at Sonic Society or at AstroTour 2010, or now at Audio Mutual. Return with us next Sunday for another exciting new feature, this time Windfall. Until then, I'm David Alt. And I'm Jack Ward. Good night. Good night. The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators 
and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen, the demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour, bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural... Worlds of dark satire. Worlds of nightmarish futures. Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already, think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D-I-G-I-T-A-L-V-A-U-D-E-V-I-L-L-E dot com.